stitches. I thought today I'd share with you my plans for my summer stitching this year. Now historically, I don't know about you, but I don't generally stitch a great deal over the summer. Well, nowhere near as much as I manage to stitch in the autumn and winter because I just don't really feel like stitching in the summer. There's more exciting things to be doing and watching. So I've picked four projects to work on throughout July and August and I've told myself I'm not allowed to start these until I finish my current whips so I want to have a clean slate to start my summer stitching so this video is also kind of a way for to encourage me to finish my last two outstanding whips that I've got so that I can get on and start these next month. So I've chosen as I say four projects Three of them have been in my stash and kitted up for quite some time, so it's nice to actually finally get on and stitch them. Two of them are just cross-stitch projects that are going to be stitched up exactly as they are charted. Two of them are cross-stitch and speciality stitch charts, and I've changed the colours and things. One of them you've probably, you might have already seen in a video I did ages and ages ago, but I'm just going to go through them so you can see what I'll be stitching over the next two months. So one of the first projects, um, the first project is a Lizzie Kate project and I think I sh actually showed my full kit of this in a video, in maybe my second video in one of my, my storage and how I kit out my project type videos. So long time viewers and those with beady eyes will recognise this one. But it's the Lizzie Kate Living With Charm series and I've had, I've had this, these charts for years and so it's really good that I've made, finally made a slot for them in my rotation to be able to stitch them. So you've already, you've probably already all seen them before. I know Judith's stitching this one up at the moment, but I've decided that I'm going to stitch these 12 designs um, in one long piece. Obviously you can stitch them into individual ornaments and make them into different things, but I'm just going to do one um, long piece of stitching with them on and my plan is eventually, once it's stitched, is that I'll finish it as like a wall hanging. I've got loads of fabric that I could use to sort of patchwork around the edges as a fabric, patchwork fabric border. So that's my plan for it anyway. Yeah, so there's 12 little, well, six charts, two designs in each. So 12 little word designs in all. And um, as I say, I'm stitching exactly as it's charted with the charted materials. So there's only one, there's one shade of Anchor DMC, whichever you prefer to use. And the rest of the colours are either Weeks Dye Works or um, Gentle Art Sampler Threads. So those are the Gentle Art Sampler Thread. I think they're Tea Rose and Huckleberry. And then the Weeks Dye Works, there's, let's see, Guacamole, Begonia, Chestnut, Collards. Williamsburg Red, I think, yeah, Williamsburg Red. Teal Frost, Navy, and Moss is the last one. So those are all the threads. They're, as I say, they're exactly what's listed on the chart. The fabric, I kind of went backwards and forwards on what I wanted to do, what fabric I wanted to stitch this on. In the end, I've gone with um, 28 count linen, but this time it's um, a permanent linen which I don't tend to use very often it's not really my favourite linen to stitch on and it's buttermilk is the colour it was in my stash so I mean there's nothing wrong with it I can stitch on it perfectly fine so I figured I would use that I had thought about stitching on 40 count but then I thought well actually it might be nice to have something on a large count well 28 count is large to me um, to stitch on you know just something easy um, not that I find, you know, 40 count hard, difficult to stitch on, but it might just give my eyes a little rest. So that's the first project. I don't know what order I'll pick these up in, but the idea is that with four projects on the go at once, throughout the summer, I can just chop and change what I'm stitching on according to my mood. I'm not necessarily going to stitch one week on one project, one week on the next project. It'll just be what I feel like. They'll all get, you know, they'll all get finished. That's not an issue. But it's just trying to keep my stitchy bug alive in the summer swapping around on different projects. So that's that one, Lizzie Kate, Living With Charm, double flips. And the next project, um, again, it's just cross stitch and I'll be stitching it with the threads as charted. 
and that's the Primitive Hair um, Sleeping Beauty design. So I'll just put up a picture to remind you what it looks like. Now, long time subscribers and viewers might remember that I stitched um, Red Riding Hood, Primitive Hair's Red Riding Hood last year. So this is the next one in the series. Obviously now there's Snow White and Rapunzel in the same series, but I don't have those because until I actually stitch the ones I have, I'm not gonna buy other ones in the series. So that's the way we're going with things at the moment. Don't know how long it will last for, but we'll see. So this one, as you've seen from the picture, it's very primitive. We're not talking Disney princesses here, and the colour palette is very, um, what can I say? Well, primitive is the only way to describe it really, I guess. I'm going to be stitching it on Edinburgh linen, just like I did the last one. So 36 count cream, can't go wrong with that. And yeah, the DMC colours are sort of, you know, browns, golds, whites and reds. A lot of brown. Let's see if I can show you them. There. Yeah, so you can see there's, you know, not too many colours and not that much variation between them, so that's fine. The only two hand dyed threads this one uses are two Gentle Ups colours and they are Banker's Grey. I had two skeins of this in my stash and you can see that they are, one is slightly darker than the other, so I'll mix them in, they'll be fine. And this one is corn husk. So those are the only two hand dyes in that one. So that should I'm looking forward to stitching that one. It should be quite an easy stitch. Red Riding Hood was, and I really enjoyed stitching that one. So that'll be good. Now the next two are slightly more exciting because for me anyway, because I've for part of the of the threads anyway, I've chosen my own colours. One of them I might have shown before, I can't remember now. But I've had this chart for ages and it's the Drawn Thread um, Butterfly Garden chart. I really love Drawn Thread charts. Um, they are they are fun to stitch, although sometimes the chart, the way they... they um, what can I say? The way they're charted isn't as simple as it might be. You have to keep referring backwards and forwards to the to the key to see what speciality stitches are stitched in what colour. But it's fine, you know, I've stitched them before, so it's all good. But one thing I did think was really good about this chart particularly is, and the other one, next design is the same, is that there's a list there for both silk and cotton materials. So either you could stitch it in MPI, solid silks, and then the hand dyed are Dinky Dye, Thread Gatherer, and Karen. Or the cotton version was DMC for solids, Threadworks, and yeah, Threadworks threads for the others. So I thought that's quite, you know, a good thing to give options there. Of course, me being me, I'm not really doing any of that. What I decided to do is cotton was... I could, I could have stitched it in either silks or cotton, but I decided to go with cotton because, I don't know, it just felt like it should be cotton to me, the design. So I picked out the DMCs because that's fairly easy. I had all those in my stash. But I decided that for the hand-dyed element of this chart, I would just pick from my Jodie Designs threads. Now, when I kitted up this chart a year ago, I only had half the Jodie Designs threads I've got now. I've now got a complete set of the hand dyed regular cotton colours. So last week I decided to just go through my colour choices just to see if subsequent threads that I've now got would be a better match. So what I did um, is this design is made up of different types of flowers, as you can see. Now of course some of the flowers, I know very well what they look like. I mean, sunflowers, everybody knows what sunflowers look like. But some of the other flowers I wasn't as familiar with, so what I did is I googled images of them just to get an idea of the colours and what they look like. Rather than, I find that, <coughs> excuse me, better than, say, for example, looking at the threads they've given. You know, one of them is Threadworks Very Berry. Looking at that thread and trying to find a match for the thread, I thought, no, go back to the original source that this is inspired from, the flowers. So that's how I decided to choose my colours. I don't necessarily always find it useful to see the colours that the chart called for and try and match it to the colour of the thread. I'd rather match it to 
how I feel about the piece or the colours that I want to use. Um, just makes it a bit easier for me. So as I say, I chose from my Joda Design thread. So the chart calls for one, two, three, four, five, eight colours of um, hand dye thread. But those are the um, DMCs. So you know, there's a few purples and pinks and greens, obviously, the colours you'd expect to see in a garden. But the threads that I've chosen, well, one thread did actually remain the same, just because I like it. <laughs> And it's a silk, so despite the fact that everything else will be stitched in cottons, um, I've chosen the silk for the for the um, words along the bottom. Now it happens to be the silk that's called for because I just really like the colour and I thought it went better than anything else I could sort of think of to come up with. And I just happen to have a little bit of it left, so as you're only using one strand of floss, it will last, it'll be fine. And that's um, Pine Forest, I think it is, yeah, Water Lily Silk Pine Forest, which is actually what the chart calls for on the silk side of the materials list. So I thought, yeah, I'll just use that one because I like it. But the other ones I've chosen are all Jodi Designs um, threads. I think I did make two changes when I, re when I looked at my list again last week, because I just had colour options that were slightly... Um, not better necessarily, because what I'd already chosen was fine, but I just thought um, they might look a little bit better. And um, oops, there we go. Those are the threads I've chosen. So there's um, never more sparkling citrine. Pretty obvious what flowers that's going to represent. Um, salsa, pasadouble, um, paplinky. This one's Arabian Days, I think I must have used it before for something, so that's why the frost tag isn't on it. And then Peaceful, I don't really know how to say that. Leopard to Light, I suppose it's called, but that's the thread. And that's the colours, so some really pretty... I knew that I'd find some sort of floral tones in my Jodi Designs threads, you know, I've got a fair few of them, so there's bound to be something that was suitable. And sometimes I find it easier when I'm picking threads to just stick with um, one particular dyers it just cut narrows down the choices because otherwise there's like too many to choose from sometimes and you're literally picking from um some threads look the same i mean for example when i was choosing my thread porn threads for this month's project some of you might have seen it on instagram or on my blog the threads that i've chosen i knew that i wanted um a teal or sea green type of thread um for the chart that i was going to do so i went through my stash and picked out all the teal threads, or, you know, or the, not necessarily teal, but sea greens, that type of colour, that I had in my stash, to see what I had and to pick from that, and I had, I don't know, seven, and three of them, you could hardly tell, they are from different dyers, but you could, there wasn't much difference, and so sometimes I do think it's a bit crazy. Um, so I like to limit what I can pick from, because otherwise it's, I could be there a while. So that is my butterfly garden drawn thread now the fabric i'm using again is edinburgh linen now there was a reason initially why i chose 36 count and that's because i think the chart says 34 count um but it's quite a long it's a long sort of thin piece of stitching and for example on 34 count you need a piece of linen that was cut 10 by 27 inches so obviously anything a lower count than that, so 32 count, 28 count, you won't be able to fit it on a fat quarter of fabric. So I was always going to choose 36 count because I could just buy a fat quarter of fabric. Now, as it turned out, I ended up with a metre of the stuff, so it didn't matter about the length. So sometimes I choose what count to stitch a piece on dependent on the actual size of it, the overall size that I want it to be and sort of fabric wastage because I mean, obviously now I would use 36 count without even thinking about it. But back then, years ago, when I first had this chart, um, I didn't necessarily want to buy half a metre if I was only going to need half of it. Or like, just needed a fat quarter, just a little bit more than a fat quarter. So I didn't necessarily want to buy half a metre. But as I say, now it doesn't matter. So I'm going to be using 36 count. And I expect quite a lot of it will be stitched in a single strand of thread so it's very thread frugal so that's good so I'm really looking forward to this one it's got different types of stitches in it um, you know, most of the ones you'd expect to see like lazy daisies for flowers and smyrnas I don't think there's any eyelets in this one 
there's probably some I forget now what type of stitches it's got in let's have a look just so that you know yeah it's got french knots man crosses square boss stitch which is rice stitch it's just a different name for it lazy daisies leaf stitch satin stitches woven satin stitches cushion stitch so all those good threads and obviously there's thread diagrams for all of them should you need them so it'd be really nice to actually get on and stitch that one after having it sit in my stash for ages and lastly um, is a slightly newer addition to my stash i think i would have only only got this towards the end of last year i can't remember why um but it was a I was going to say unconscious purchase, but it was because I got it. I got it from Seven Seven. The chart was really cheap, so I thought I love the design, and I just bought the chart. As you do, but it's a Just Nan chart, which I think will be the first Just Nan chart that I've stitched. I don't think I've. I don't think I've stitched any of hers, but it's this one, Emma and Eliza in the garden. So again, this chart was good because it saved me a lot of work. You can see from the materials list that it charts it for silk and it charts it for DMC. So I didn't have to do any conversions of DMC with that already. I could have stitched it in silk, but again, I just, oh, I don't know, I just went for cotton. It would be very expensive to stitch this in the charted Soir d'Alger silks. I did have some of them and one of the threads I'm going to use is a silk, despite the rest of it being cotton. But you would use such a tiny amount of the silk really i mean it's what's the stitch count of this design 199 by 69 um because you'd only need to use one strand of the silk to stitch on 36 count so it would have cost a phenomenal amount to get it up in the silks so that is charted but anyway i couldn't do that i decided i was stitching cotton so what i did is i looked at the chart and I sort of earmarked areas where I could choose my own thread, something hand dyed, just to give it a little bit, um, I don't know really, just something a bit different really. Plus the fact I've got to use up, well not use up, but I've got to use threads where I can for Operation Threadborn because all these threads will count towards my totals. So I figured why not. So elements of like solid stitching or areas where you would notice that it was used, well I would notice a hand dyed thread was used, that's kind of what I went for really. So there's a few DMCs, but I'll just show you the other threads, special hand dye threads. But there's lots of, you know, there's sort of greens and purples and lots of blues in this one. But I decided that for the um, words, for the font, I would use a silk for that one because I had a nice, lovely blue Ava silk in my stash. And so I thought I would use that one. And then just for the flowers and the plant pots, things like that, I picked out um, random hand dye floss from my stash. These aren't all the same, as you all realise, aren't all from the same dyer. I just sort of thought, okay, right, let's find the best purples, the best pinks. I went that way with this design. So we have a lovely Threadworks thread in purple, which I can't remember the name of. I think it's eggplant. Threadworks threads come with a number which then correspond to the name so they're not printed on the floss labels which can be annoying. Anyway, that's a lovely purple. This is a random hand dye thread from, I can't remember where, how I came across this, but anyway, from Canada, that's wine. And then there's a Moe's sail thread, because I thought that would be, those two go together for the purple flowers and then for the pink flowers. In the design, I've got uh, ghasts in Victorian pink and pink azalea. And I think there might be three colours used in the flowers, so that's why. There's three pinks, sort of different, slightly different tones. And um, nutmeg, what is that for? I think there's, there's some terracotta pots, so that's the colour I chose for those. And then there's grey pots as well. And so I just picked out um, a gentle arts thread for that one, and that one's in barn grey. So, obviously, colours are changeable. I might stitch with it, and it might not look right, or whatever. So these are by no means, you know, the final choice. They cannot be changed. But that's what I'm starting with, and that will be what I'll be working from for that one. And this one is 
Um, again, it's got a few different types of stitches in. I can't remember what they are now. Um, but I'm really looking forward to doing this one. Should be a really fun one to stitch. I think I can't tell just by looking what they are. But it's a band sample, you know, it is really, it's a band sampler really, and I'm slightly obsessed with those at the moment. In one way, I suppose the, the drawn thread design was kind of a band sampler-ish, in the sense that obviously it's made up of different sections, but it goes horizontally and not um, vertically. So, yeah, that one should be fun to stitch. Don't ask me what I'm going to do. Well, apart from the Lizzie Kate design, don't ask me, don't even go there. What I'm going to do with these when they're finished, they'll sit in the drawer until further inspiration appears. But I just enjoy stitching and stitching them. You know, they're really fun designs for the summer, you know, flowers and gardens and stuff. So maybe that's probably what inspired my choices. So that is what I will hopefully be working on in June, July and August. Now, if by some miracle my stitching bug manages to get through those at a rate of knots. There are four other designs that I have to stitch, which I'm actually, I don't, I don't know if I'm more excited about stitching those than these. I don't know, I'm excited about stitching all of them because they've just been in my stash for that long. Um, but those four designs, Clouds Factory designs, will require more thought. Because there's a few little things I want to add to them and ideas that I have. So they, they'll take a bit more planning than these I mean, these have been, most of these have been kitted up for at least, well, where are we now? June. They've definitely been kitted up since the beginning of the year, so I haven't really had to think about them so much as the Clouds for Active Science that I want to do. So there you go. Those are my summer stitching plans for this year. At times like this in the summer, when I don't stitch as much, I tend to plan more. So I've planned out my stitching for autumn and winter. I know what I'm going to be stitching then. And I have come up with the seed of an idea for my stitching for next year, which I'm actually also very excited about. Lots of different things hopefully going on next year, but I'll tell you more about that near the time when I work out the details of exactly what I'm going to do. So there you go. That is my video for this week. I will be back with finished videos, hopefully, if I finish my whips that I'm doing. One's already finished from my New Beginnings video. One's already finished, it needs to be finished, finished. So I thought I'd wait until then to show you in a video. I've got my hard anger to do and my gold right to finish. Those are the two that are sticking for whatever reason. I'm just not in the mood to do them. I've, I've done my thread porn projects for this month. So um, this is kind of the carrot approach to encouraging me to get on and do those, remembering these designs that I've wanted to stitch for ages and that I can get to stitch them but only if I finish what I've already got on the go. So, there you are. I will be back at some point with those videos and also I'm working on um, a hard anger basic stitch tutorial type video. Those take a lot longer to work out than just normal me waffling. But there is one in the works for those of you that are interested and have mentioned your interest in that. I am working on one in the background. So all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching and happy stitching.